the sun is rising and the magpie is casting. Coming to you guys right now with a live one versus one battle featuring spawning in the east. It is going to be the Vermact forces of Ahito WWU in the Rockin, who I'm just going to call Ahito. And spawning in the west, it is going to be the Soviet forces of Burmy. <coughs> Yeah, Magpie842 coming at you guys right now with an early morning cast. The sun is literally rising. It is quite early here. Uh, had to get up early for um, reasons. And now, uh, well, I don't know. Just kind of felt like casting. Got my cup of tea here, all, all locked and loaded, ready to rock. Um, and uh, I kind of also thought, you know, like, because this new balance patch is coming out soon and there's going to be some pretty big and sweeping changes to the game coming our way very soon, it would be a good opportunity to cast some classic... Vintage Company of Heroes 2, featuring Vermacht and Soviets on Kolodny Firma, kicking it like it's 2012. Good times, uh, ready to be had by all. So, uh, yeah, seriously though, um, this is quite a blast from the past, really. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, really is going to feel pretty old school. All we need now is the three man, the three man weapon teams and uh, some overpowered hit the hit the dirt <laughs> conscript tactics or. Some of the other hilarious stuff that was in the game on release. God damn, this game was a completely different kettle of fish on release. <laughs> it was like, it was a different game. Make no mistake. Anyway, looks like our players are going to begin their initial scuffles. We've got uh, some exchange of rifle fire going down in the middle of the map. And, uh, wow, apparently when it's early in the morning, I kind of take on this, like, weather forecaster slash airline pilot kind of voice. Uh, we're just cruising at about two minutes into this game. Uh, the weather in Kolodny Farmer is uh, going to be sunny for the rest of the day. Uh, for those of you who've joined the cast before, we'll be familiar with our in-cast services. Uh, what on earth, Magpie? What on earth? Anyway, we've got an MG MG42 up in this building. You can hear it just now, hooning upon these engineers. And, oh, man, I... Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I was just born a wrong un, but there is something nice about the sound of an MG42 in the morning. Uh, that's probably because I've never had to live through the horrors of war and don't associate that sound with anything other than playing one of my favorite video games, now that I think about it. But seriously, that sound really does... Oh, it's just like, it's like a shot of coffee, you know? It just wakes you straight up. You're immediately just like, ah, oh, MG42 opening up. If you're, if you're a Vermac player, that's a good sound. If you're, a, if you're an allied player, you're just like, ha ha, wow. Gotta get my troops out of that arc. And uh, that is exactly what Burmy is going to be faced with having to do in uh, just a second. These engineers here getting pinned down on the doorstep of his base. This MG42 actually becoming a little bit bothersome. Grenadiers supporting from this building as well. And uh, as uh, Vermac players are wont to do, Ahito here getting set up into a nice little uh, forward defensive position here. Just being as annoying as possible and trying to constrain the field presence of Burmy here. Some engineers actually going to swipe this building back though. These Grenadiers now down to two men going to be forced to displace here. Burmy by the way, has chosen his commander as we have a scout sniper squad coming out onto the field. Burmy choosing the uh, spicy special uh, special weapons tent, as I like to call it. Um, no, yeah, he's got the scout sniper, but he's also chosen the armored assault tactics. There they are on the screen. If you're not familiar with this commander, just hit pause right now. And there we go. Because there is a fight going on, which I'd quite like to cover. Uh, looks like this MG42 still being bothersome. I mean, this is... Literally like it is 2012, isn't it? We've got an MG42 in the middle building on Kolodny Farm. This is this is actual vintage Company of Heroes right here. I'm loving it. I am loving it. Looks like Ahito going to be going up to the third squad of Grenadiers here. The roster for Burmy uh, fleshing out nicely. Third squad of Conscript going to be joining in. He's also got a Flammenwerfer uh, on his uh, on his uh, Russian engineers here. So that's going to add some uh, some very heated spice to these engagements as we move forward. Going to be some opportunity for some grisly flamey kills. Looks like this MG42 has wisely decided to relocate to a slightly safer building. Slightly suspect facing on this arc. If, if, if this building is assaulted in the next minute or two, which could happen actually, uh, it will be punished for facing in this direction. He really wants it facing to the west here, uh, but uh, <coughs> he's unlikely to get punished for that. Looks like uh, Burmy going to be committing most of his forces into the north, but if we look at the minimap we can see, or uh, indeed on the main screen here... Uh, oh, have I not changed the s HUD size? Oh, early morning casting, Magpie, so unprofessional. Alright, we'll just pretend that never happened. Smooth! Um, yeah, um, uh, we've got a squad of conscripts just uh, chewing away at some ground down here in the south, and I really like this actually. Let's crack the tack and we'll get the uh, sort of satellite overview on the situation here. And we can see that... Uh, 
Burmy here with a very nice uh, spread of units, actually applying pressure throughout the map here, and uh, Ihito very much going to be on the back foot as far as taking fights in the next couple of minutes goes. Also the resource differential, if you cast your eyes at the bottom of the screen, at the moment registering a slight lead for the Soviet player, but I will expect that to increase as, uh, as Burmy takes more points around the map, if he's able to do so. Which right now I would say the uh, Soviet capture forecast, looking good for him. Two squads of Grenadiers going to get the jump on these conscripts, though, and that is going to favor the uh, Axis player here. Ihito taking a sweet fight there. Now his MG42, though, getting flanked. Nice concave of units here. Scout snipers are in the hood. Going to start chipping away at the crewmen. A couple of squads of Axis units here, Grenadiers and Pioneers, going to be here to support. Conscripts getting suppressed. Here come the Flammenwerfers, though, and that's where the big damage is. MG42 gets out in a timely fashion, and Ihito going to keep that squad alive, but forced to give up the position. And now, how the tables have turned... Pardon me, it is now, uh, it is now um, Burmy establishing a position more or less on the doorstep of his opponent's base. Very nice here. Looks like he's no stranger to uh, to this map. And here we have a 2-2-2 scout car, Zvi 100 Spy and Svansish. And for the Soviet player, if we just quickly check the tech here, you can see that the Tank of E Battalion command has finished. And the Soviet player is constructing a half track. Now I wonder if he's going to be given pause to reconsider now that he sees a 2-2-2 on the field. The 2-2-2, of course, you know, the uh, auto cannon on that thing, reasonably potent against uh, light armored targets, such as a half track. The half track, of course, also much more valuable than a 2-2-2. So a very promising target for the German scout car that would represent. However, if he goes for the quad mount upgrade, and we can see that coming just now 120 munitions invested here by Burmy uh, you know obviously the uh, the quad mount just rips up a, a 222 so that is probably why he is uh, confident completing the unit and allowing it out onto the field which here here, here it is now <coughs> That quad mount going to finish here momentarily. You can see in the bottom right of the screen the progress bar. He's just going to flail it straight into this 222. And I imagine Ihito now panicking slightly. He knows the quad mount must be about to finish. There it comes. And he's going to get a little bit of quad mount dacker here onto the 222. But it looks like, oh wow, these poor uh, pioneers are going to be suffering the main brunt of the uh, brutal Soviet half tracks aggression right now. And a nice fight being taken here by Burmy in mid. Three squads of conscripts applying good pressure to the Axis units, forcing Ihito back. Uh, which I have to say, you know, to his credit, he is falling back in good order. But a squad of Grenadiers left for a little bit too long there, getting suppressed and hosed down by the half track. I'm amazed that that squad was uh, saved there. Ihito, I think, getting a touch lucky. Uh, any stray conscript rifle round there could have picked this squad off. But uh, the dice rolls uh, favoring uh, Ihito uh, in, that, in that circumstance. Pity the scout snipers went in the hood, actually, able to take a shot. These boys now up to seven kills. Pat Gunn is now just entering the field for Ahito, so he is going to be uh, safeguarded against future armoured investments for Burmy. Also, of course, this is going to provide him quite a measure of control and, uh, and a significant uh, deterrent for the uh, Soviet half-track. <coughs> which is just now being repaired in a reasonable location here. MG42 back in this building, going to be uh, plinking away, but you know what else is plinking? Soviet snipers. Up to eight kills now, claiming another Axis skull. BAM! Kopfschoss! Uh, although, actually, that is not Russian for headshot. Whoa, the MG42 actually finds the Soviets in the arc. A touch awkward there for Burmy. Gets some nice damage onto those snipers and is going to force them back. Now, here comes the move out. The 222, the pack gun here, going to force the uh, half track back. Snipers are actually forced to uh, re retreat here. The 222 comes in. He actually smells blood in the water here. That half track is actually suspiciously low, having taken a round from the pack gun. So, uh, Ihito just having a little probe there, seeing if Burmy was going to be uh, remiss enough to leave his half track in a position where the 222 could uh, capitalize. But. Uh, that's not going to be the case. Some skirmishing going up here in the north of the map. We've got a flamer unit of engineers and uh, some grenadiers and pioneers in the hood. Actually, if Burmy micros this uh, correctly, he may even be able to force both these Axis units back. Keep an eye on the minimap for updates on that. Looks like AT grenades have finished here for the Soviet forces, and the uh, 222 scout car here going to take one to the nose. That's going to break the engine, and if the Soviet half-track is at all repaired, which uh, I can confirm it is not, uh, then it could have come in here to capitalize, but another AT grenade is going to be all that is needed. Another squad of conscripts here coming in nicely. Ura was used to connect with that grenade. Very nice stuff from there. Uh, very nice stuff there. Sorry, from Burmy. And uh, wow, we've got Panzer Grenadiers coming onto the field. Oh, here they are. And uh, Panzer Shrek upgrades being taken immediately here for Ahito. So this really is like it's 2012. This is vintage, actual vintage Company of Heroes. This is. This is. Oh wow, what, a, what simple days they were before, before the American forces, before the Overcommand West, before the British forces, back when they were only about like, I don't know what, 12, 12 or 16 maps tops. 
and uh, simpler times, better times, maybe, if you're an insane person. Absolutely not better times. The game is so much better today than it was back in 2012. <laughs> what are you saying, Magpie? Oh, dearie me. Early morning casting is clearly quite a philosophical time for the mag. Did I just refer to myself in, in the third person as the mag? Oh, that's obnoxious. <laughs> anyway, um... Seems like uh, some conscripts going to be forced back here. Fight being taken up here in the north. 50 cal half track going to be used here to push away a couple of squads of grenadiers. And that is effective use from Burmy. Even if he's not really getting any damage, and he's getting some damage, uh, using the half track in this way is really nice. Oh, he even manages to interrupt the uh, telemine placement from those pioneers. Ihito here, seemingly nothing going his way. And now Burmy's going to be pushing up for a bit of a land grab here. A couple of squads going to be dominating these points and uh, seeking to move on up. And uh, again, if we crack the tack, you can see the, the situation here. The majority of the map will be turning red here. The resource differential will be favoring the Soviet player. Oh, wow. And the scout snipers are actually going to find this uh, pack gun and start, bow, going to start just chipping down the crew. Vasily here, a crucial... Uh, an elite marksman. That's going to force the Axis weapon team back. These Panzer Grenadiers are also going to have to be scarce. They are the last unit you want to be picked down by snipers. Uh, of course, very expensive per head. And when the heads are what's getting busted by snipers, uh, that is relevant. Oh, you can hear the uh, radio intercepts here for Burmy, making use of uh, his commander's abilities there. So he knows that his opponent has chosen the GR-34 centimeter mortar. It was interesting, actually. I was having a discussion with uh, Stormless recently. Uh, I'm sure most of you must know who Stormless is. One of the most prolific and excellent casters and players in the community. Um, but for those of you who don't know him, shout out to my buddy Stormless. Head on over to his YouTube channel. Give him a subscribe. Check out his sweet content. And more importantly as well, head on over to his Twitch channel. That guy casts like a legend. Like, just such consistent casting. Uh, so uh, anyway, yeah, do check out Stormless. But as I was saying, I was having a discussion with Stormless recently about the relative merits of the indirect fire pieces. But you know what? I'll save that discussion for in just a second. We've got a fight being taken here. The half track takes a round from the pack, and that is going to force it back. MG42 getting set up in a lovely building here, going to suppress these conscripts who do actually have a. Are those penals? Uh, yeah, sorry, that's a penal squad because they've got the flamer uh, there. Uh, so some penal squads being used. Ah, interesting. Quite spicy here from Burmy. I'll be keen to see that unit do well. Not often we see penals on the field. But anyway, extended fighting going on. You can hear the GR-34 hooning shells into the Soviet position. A lucky round could catch these snipers. But it looks like right now he's using a barrage to try and displace the conscripts in this building. Meanwhile, it looks like Ahito going to be spreading out his forces, looking for a bit of a land grab here. But oh, the conscripts are going to take this building as well. So Burmy here... Kind of doing everything right. In the south of the map, there is a squad of pioneers who are crucially grabbing victory points. And that is crucial for Ahito right now, who finds himself at, uh, down at 3-1-3 at the 13-minute mark. That's a lot of 1s and 3s. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's quite far behind in terms of the victory points. He'd love to close that gap and give himself a bit more breathing room because... Uh, it sucks entering the mid or late game with low CPs because then uh, low, 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 you know, low victory points because then you're forced to take poor fights in order to secure, <coughs> you know, the victory points on the map. This GR34, the rate of fire is absurd, absolutely absurd. Jesus, these, it's like an actual constant rain of shells. I'd, I'd forgotten just how spicy a GR34 is. Oh my god, he's leveled that building in like record timing using that GR34. Madness. But uh, as I was saying, just uh, to, to go back to my point before uh, all this combat began. Um, yeah, I was talking to Stormless about the relative merits of the indirect fire squads that you get in the game, and we were thinking, the Lig gun is is basically gone back to being god awful, hasn't it? I mean, that thing. I would I would have I would I would rather have a GR thirty four or a PM eighty one any day, any time. That Lig gun is dire. I mean, three hundred thirty manpower for such low DPS. Woe betide you if you make two of them. That is, as I was, as I was saying to Stormers, a suicide wish at, every, uh, at any high level of play. So, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, that light gun is back in a pretty bad place, really. Anyway, GR34 here, going to be taking some pretty nice shots out here. Oh, the Panzer Grenadiers here getting a lovely couple of Shreks into the half-track, but now in danger of being run down. Uh, the half-track doing some really good damage, and of course, remember, this thing, one of the premier chasing units in the game, and this will be a squad wipe here. Ugh. Uh, it, uh, if I sound like that actually hurt me in the soul, it's because I just know exactly that that is such a bad feeling for any Vermac player. Having one of your premier squads, a 360 manpower elite squad of Panzer Grenadiers, who you've then spent 120 munitions buying Panzer Shreks for, you know, that is a big investment. And to have it gunned down by the very unit you were hoping to use it to counter is uh, harsh, to say the least. 
but that's going to be the reality here for Ahito. Having said that, though, I still don't mind his army. Look at the top left of the screen. Three squads of Grenadiers, a pack gun, a mortar, an MG42, and some Pioneers is a fine force to be working with here, clocking in at 47 supply, which is more than that of Burmy at 39. And if you look at the top left and look at the top right, yes, Burmy has the very spicy half-track now at two stars of veterancy, but I kind of think these two armies more or less even. And uh, if, if I was to take over from one of these players right now, well, yes, I'd take over from Burmy. His situation considerably better. But um, it's very close, and there's a Panzer IV on the queue, actually. Burmy hasn't really spent his fuel now, I think about it. Okay, so he does have his mechanized armor camp on and I'd love to see him go for either an SU-85 or a Katusha. We'll see what the choice is going to be. Ooh, that GR-34 is looking for these snipers. Oh, just glancing some shells in as we've got a fight being taken down in the south of the map. Ihito, clearly a believer in the power of the LMG-42, by the way. Which I have to say is quite refreshing. Wow, he's gunning down those penals as well. But yeah, I have to say that's quite refreshing. Uh, Vermac players these days often leaving the upgrades for uh, quite a long time. But uh, Ihito this game, he's had enough munitions for um, detectors, three LMG-42s. I mean, I know we're 16 and a half minutes into this game, but he also bought Shreks. You know, he's been just fine. Well, Telemine's in a very nice position here. That half-track playing with fire. And Burmy doesn't know. Oh, no. Oh, oh look how quickly that thing just... That is... That is a, an incredibly in efficient murderator. That is just an incredibly efficient murderator. Oh no. And having lost a squad of your grenadiers with an LMG 42, that's just, oh, that is a heart sinking feeling for any Axis player, for any Vermac player. Anyway, here comes the Panzer IV. Looks like he's decked that one out with Panzer Ground. Not sure what I think about that one. A little bit of a mess skin, to be honest. I mean, it's okay. It'll do. It's quite smart, but it's not very cool. Uh, so, you know, just going to criticize the fashion choices here of Ahito. Uh, he could also take that MG42 Pintle Mount upgrade if he wants to, and I would like him to do that. He has to be careful. That GR34 is firing very close to his Telemines, which his Grenadiers were close to there. Opportunity for mayhem and disaster there. Looks like a T3485 going to be the weapon of choice here for Burmy, uh, which uh, obviously is way out on to the field now. Nice attack round rounds there from uh, Ihito. Looks like a Panzerfaust gonna connect here, and there goes the engine of the Soviet medium. Wow, these uh, conscripts have actually swiped themselves a Panzer Shrek. That really hurts for the Axis player. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, we're gonna have a medium armor battle here. But the SU, uh, sorry, the uh, T35. Uh, T the T-3485, I'll get there in the end. Early morning casting for the win. Wow, this is awkward. <laughs> hmm. uh, but yeah, this... Oh, the demo charge! Oh, oh my god, Burmy, you're such a bad man. Oh, he's just been doing all the gross squad wipes this game. If this continues, Ihito will just lose the game. He has got to sharpen up here. Oh no, he's going to donate this L this uh, MG42. Oh no, he takes the fight with the Panzer IV, but guess what? The engine's been fixed on the uh, T-34, and all it has to do is back up, and then it's got a nice flank on this uh, Panzer IV. Is he going to use it? Come on, Burmy, we need you to use that thing. MG42 getting flamed out of this building. Demo charge comes down. Ahito's going to lose this. Oh, oh, oh. oh, the squad wipes are just absolutely brutal. Pack gun here in a nice position, though, actually. If this, SU, uh, sorry, if this T-3485 tries to get involved, it will... Ha it will get caught in the arc of this pack gun, so that is something. Here it comes. Yeah, there we go. Oh my god, this Panzer Forge King utterly stricken, though. AC Grenade connects. The Conscripts with the Shreks looking for the next hit. And it's gonna... Oh, wow, actually, not taking it. Actually, wasting the Shrek into this uh, pack gun. Oh my god, but the flank with the half-track is real. Here comes some supporting Grenadiers, but the T-3485 will complete the kill on this Panzer Four. I strongly suspect. No, hang on. Oh, okay, just getting it at the last possible moment. But it's likely the T-34-85 no, is probably going to escape, actually. Are there any additional Axis units in the hood ready to make good on that kill? No. And Ahito is going to choose this moment to GG. And can you really blame him? That was a concise beating from Burmy. Ahito playing uh, a very succinct, concise style, but just not quite sharp enough. And, um, and by just not quite sharp enough, I mean literally out by like fractions of seconds or handfuls of seconds here or there enabling Burmy to complete grisly squad wipes and that is the nature of playing Wehrmacht against Soviet forces you've got these very expensive very fragile squads uh you know not expensive in terms of um, manpower and and the uh, resources that you put into them they just seem expensive they feel expensive because they're so fragile and uh, Burmy with the grimy Soviet squad wipes. We saw just about everything here. We saw snipers. We saw the 
the flak half track we saw the only thing we didn't see is some grimy mine squad wipes but i feel like burmy kind of he gave us like the next best thing which is probably even better which was that demo charge squad wipe um absolutely grimy just just kind of taking the vermac player apart and you get the feeling burmy quite good at that like he's had a lot of practice almost like this map and matchup has been in the game since release burmy a well-oiled soviet killing machine here and uh a well-deserved win for him that was well played um so yeah um a little bit of little, little bit of a heads up next week on uh let me just get the dates for you here i'm just going to check my calendar next week on the 23rd and the 24th i'll be casting uh, a 2v2 tournament with stormless uh it's going to be uh, a blast more details about that as i get them but uh yeah next week thursday friday evening um starting at seven o'clock uh british time uh yeah we'll be casting some uh, sweet 2v2 action so uh, if you guys are around uh definitely tune on in it'll be uh it'll be good times it'll be good times and i gotta say it'll be really nice to be doing some uh, some live casting again um so yeah, uh, I believe that brings this battle uh, to its conclusion. So thank you very much for watching, and this is Magpie842. Uh, probably going to go and have some breakfast now, and also signing out. <laughs>